throw, throws a slant, has gone, here's a touchdown, T.J. Duffield, Hart wheels into the end zone, and the Boilermakers take the lead with under six minutes to play. McConnell, Huffy, throw to the end zone, and the ball is on the money, it's caught for a touchdown by David Bell. And here comes a reverse, and then a throw. Makers closed out a great regular season on Old Oak and Bucket Saturday, knocking off the Indiana Hoosiers 44 to 7 and recapturing the bucket, bringing it back to its rightful place in West Lafayette. Finishing the regular season at 8 and 4, Purdue has been selected to play in the Transperfect Music City Bowl. That'll be December 30th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. The opponent will be the Tennessee Volunteers. The only other time that the Boilermakers have played the Volunteers was another bowl game. The last college football game played in the 1970s. It was played New Year's Eve 1979 and Purdue won that one 27-22. The Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl down in Texas. Alright, we've got the head coach with us. We're going to talk Boilermaker football a little bit later on in the program. We'll be hearing from Tom Moreland, the Senior Associate Athletic Director. And uh, Tom will be talking about football tickets and about packages for travel for fans that are looking to go down and watch the Boilermakers and Volunteers play. You can get your questions or comments in for the coach at 888-246-2678. We're also on Facebook on the Purdue Athletics page, so you can let us know where you're watching from and also leave some comments there as well. We'll have the head coach with us. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group right after this break from Learfield. There's more. Welcome back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of ross State Stadium. Again, we've got Coach Brom with us, uh, and it was a big day. It's signing day. 19 high school seniors have signed letters of intent today, and we're going to be talking about several of them. I do want to give a, a little bit of a quick uh, heads up. Uh, there are a number, as people know, the transfer portal is alive and active, and people are coming and going at institutions around the country. Coach Brom cannot talk about players in the portal because they have not officially become Boilermakers yet. So if you have questions, he can talk about players who signed today, but he's not able to talk about those other players. We'll talk a little bit about the signees, Jeff, but I do want to get back to the regular season. We didn't get a chance to really recap the Old Oak and Bucket game, but any time that the Boilermakers can win that Old Oak and Bucket back, it's worth talking about. 44-7 is a pretty convincing day at ross Aid. You know, it was a great way to finish the regular season. I thought our guys came ready to play. They know the importance of uh, getting the bucket back, and uh, our fans showed out in great force again. So that 
gives our guys a lot of motivation. Um, and uh, we hung in there strong, had a decent first half, and then we just kind of pulled away in the second half by making plays. And I uh, just was proud of our team's performance. Um, anytime you play your rival, you never know what's going to happen. You have to come ready to play and do the small things correctly, be into it. And, and our guys were. So it was just a good way to finish the regular season and move on now to the postseason. And I was very proud of our team. Defense gave up down in the opening possession, shut Indiana out the rest of the way. And I think as good as the offense was at times, and we're going to talk about Aiden O'Connell and others here, the deep the turnaround they had in 2021. You know, in order to win really tough football games and competitive games against good teams, you've got you have to have all three segments uh, working together. And uh, you know, offense uh, found a way to get better as the year went on, uh, and over the years has done some decent things. Our defense has had some moments where we've struggled uh, without question, and uh, that was the emphasis in the offseason to make sure that we, uh, and, and I, uh, did my part uh, to help uh, get that you know, side of the ball turned around and, and without question I think just by <clears throat> doing some subtle things different by playing more aggressive, challenging things more, um, blitzing more, uh, not giving as much cushion, uh, you know, helped our guys gain confidence and make more plays so that was good to see and I think special teams even though we had a few moments here and there what uh, that we need to get better at, overall it was, it was better and uh, so when, you know, all three segments are clicking. Uh, that's the key. We've got to continue to improve upon that and uh, figure out ways to get more explosive and, and, and get more big plays on, on all those segments. But uh, I do think we made strides, and we'll continue to work hard on that. A lot of players had individual great season on, uh, seasons on the defensive side, and certainly nobody more than George Karloftis, who's earned All-American honors. And George announcing earlier here this month that he is going to forego his senior season. He won't be playing in the bowl game. But I think his legacy, not only from the season he just had, but also we talked, you talked today at your press conference about the influence he had on one of your signees, Joe Strickland, who's going to try and follow in his footsteps. George Karloftis is a lifelong Boilermaker. Very proud of George. And uh, anytime you can convince uh, someone in state or someone local uh, to take pride in representing their state and uh, the Purdue football program and making a name for, for that and uh, uh, is always great. And I think we reap the benefits of, of the hard work that George put in uh, the work ethic he had, the dedication he had to becoming the best he could be. It meant something more to him uh, to go out there and, and wear the, uh, the gold and black and to represent uh, Purdue every, every time he stepped on the field. And he definitely exceeded all expectations when they, and they originally were high. And uh, he's got a bright future. Um, you know, others know now with George and David and Rondell that, you know, you can easily emulate that if you want. And, and choose to come and uh, do something special, be a difference maker in front of your family and friends and, uh, and have a bright future. So we, we, we look forward to continuing that. You know, Joe Strickland getting on board uh, we think is huge. He can be a difference maker for us. And, of course, you know, the quarterback, uh, Brady Allen, we signed, we think can be a difference maker. Two in-state guys that uh, were not only commitments to us uh, all along, but uh, did a tremendous job helping others uh, recruits get on board. All right, let's squeeze in a phone call before we take our first break. We'll go to Daryl from Philadelphia. Daryl, what's your question for Coach Brown? Hey, Coach, congratulations on the win, man, uh, and going to the bowl game. I think we're definitely going in the right direction as a program. I just got one simple question. Are you going to work um, on AOC sliding ability? <laughs> well, good question, Daryl. Thanks for the call as well and, and uh, for your support. Uh, you know what? We're excited to uh, get Aiden back for another year. I think everyone saw the strides he made the last half of the year. He played at a level that really is is hard to duplicate, and uh, it helped us win football games. So it's a credit to the work ethic he had and my brother Brian working with him on a daily basis. Uh, and to get him back for a full year is going to be exciting. I think he's going to take a lot of pride in it. He's going to work extremely hard to, to get better at all elements. Um, you know, running probably isn't his strength and probably sliding isn't his strength. But, yes, we want him to protect himself. Uh, protect himself. Um, you know, there are a few times where you've got to – get a few extra yards and others where you need to protect yourself and get down and, and yes he's taken a couple shots even in the last game and uh, we want to make sure that we uh, minimize those as much as we can uh, and uh, he had a couple times two years ago where he ran and got injured so we've got to you know make sure he protect him himself and uh, you know I think he'll work hard at it. He works really hard at becoming the best athlete he can be and, and studying the game and uh, just a great leader and a great teammate. All right we need to take a break this is the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group back with more after this from Learfield.
Makers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brom Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Roman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Let's check in on Facebook. We have uh, somebody watching from Chesterton, Indiana, Evanston, Illinois, checking in. Plymouth, Indiana, Swamico, Wisconsin. Uh, Platte City, Missouri, that's near Kansas City, Attica, Indiana, Lafayette, Louisiana, Austin, Texas, and our uh, winner of the furthest from the pin, Porto Alegre, Brazil, checking in tonight on the Jeff Brown Show, and we're happy to have you with us. Jeff, in the last segment, you mentioned Aiden O'Connell, who decided uh, and announced earlier this week he would be coming back for a sixth year of eligibility, and I think he's a kind of a rags-to-riches story that you don't see a whole lot in college football, a guy that came here as a walk-on, had a chance to play maybe at the Division three level but decided he wanted to try big time football and not only has he made it here on the team and as a starter but he's got second team all big 10 recognition this year and who knows what the sky the limit is for him on his uh, quarterback play it's a special story and uh i think that it's hard enough to you know play at that level in general coming in as a highly touted recruit but to uh, start where he did and just uh work extremely hard to get to the point where he's at now he's gotten better each and every year he's come through when we had numerous guys injured a couple years ago he's fought through competition and uh you know improved his game where he like i said the last you know five or six games was really playing at a high level is just a, a remarkable story so like i said a credit to him uh the strong faith and work ethic he has the great family he has and like i said i think brian has done a great job working with him and uh you know, we're looking forward to getting more from them. Back to the phone lines. Don is calling in tonight from Indianapolis. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, congratulations, Coach, on a great year and uh, continue it with a win, uh, win in the uh, in the bowl game. But my question is, what's your stance on Karloflis and and David Bell sitting out the bowl game? Did you try to talk them out of it, or do you pretty much agree with their uh, their choice of not playing? Well, thanks. Uh, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, I understand today's age of college football. Uh, you know, I'm old school, just like probably you are and others. And, you know, I communicated to both guys, and I would to anyone that it's, it's always great to, f to finish what you started. Uh, I never want our guys to sell themselves short. I always think they can improve their stock by playing more football and, and, and having a great performance. Uh, having a, a bowl game where you're the only game on TV and playing against great competition and going out there and showcasing again what you're all about, to me, can help improve your stock. With that said, you know, I understand where they're at. And, uh, you know, both guys have a tremendously bright future. Uh, normally towards the end of the season, they start to communicate with agents and people that are telling them things different than what I said there. And uh, they've got to make the best decision for them. So in general, uh, we're going to support, you know, their decision uh, and uh, wish for the best and hope that they get drafted as high as they can and make it. Carl Loftus in an earlier segment. You mentioned David Bell. David Bell has already been named an All-American by three different organizations, which makes him a consensus All-American. He's your first one since Rondale Moore in 2018. And the guy that came in, I think, with a lot of hype, Jeff, I think there was a lot of uh, excitement when he came in, and he lived up to every single bit of hype that he had. Yes, he did. And, um, you know, some of the games that he had uh, and the performances he put on against tremendous competition, like I said, that's 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 hard to do, and uh, he came through. And he's a guy that uh, really performs well in the clutch. Uh, he doesn't shy away from competition. Uh, he rises to the occasion. Uh, he works extremely hard. He's just got, you know, outstanding hand-eye coordination and ball skills, and really understands the receiver position and is able to run the entire route tree and understood our offense. So you know, I think any team that gets him is going to be lucky. Uh, he's got toughness he plays through nicks and injuries and uh, I think he's got a long career at the next level uh, the Boilermakers had a lot of different offensive weapons but one guy we were really happy to see step up uh, Jackson Anthrop I thought really played the best football of his career at the end of his six-year career and it was great to see him walk off the field with the old oaken bucket in hand in his last game you know really proud of Jackson and uh, once again he's got a Purdue family that uh, supports him and uh, you know, I was right there with him every step of the way. And Jackson came in and had a tremendous first year for us. 
I don't know, 12 years ago, whenever that was. Um, <laughs> Seemed then, like it. <laughs> uh, you know, we had some good talent come through and didn't quite get as much action, never complained one time, did everything you asked, special teams, return kicks, cover kickoffs, cover punts, catch punts, play in the slot, uh, you know. And then this year, you know, I'm not going to lie, I think, myself and us did a better job of utilizing all of his skills which means running in the backfield getting it to getting him the ball behind the line of scrimmage uh, in the slot uh, uh, you know returning some kicks uh, you know all in all special teams and he just really rose to the occasion occasion but it's because he's a tremendous uh, person uh, an outstanding teammate and uh, really cares about Purdue and it meant a lot to him to to help us win and make improvements so really proud of Jackson all right, we've talked about the fact that today is signing day. We're going to talk about the Boilermaker signing class when we come back. It is the Jeff Brom Show presented by Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. the largest view of the game outside of ross Aid Stadium. We mentioned today is the first day of national signing period. This is the day that most players sign, and Purdue put 19 on the dotted line today, including six from the state of Indiana. You mentioned, I think, the two headliners that people are most familiar with, Joe Strickland, the defensive end from Burbuff High School in Indianapolis. From Gibson Southern, they played each other in the state championship game. Joe's team jumped out to a big lead. Joe sacked Brady in that game for a safety. Brady came back and threw a whole bunch of touchdown passes and led his team to the lead and, and a win. Brady Allen's got size. You can teach a lot of things, Jeff, but you can't teach 6'5", 210 at the quarterback position. You know, just really uh, you know, great players. And, and Brady and, and Joe Strickland had, had uh, tremendous high school careers. Um, you know, we, we got a chance to be around them quite a bit in the recruiting process, them and their families. Uh, you know, did a great job of recruiting other players for us during the year and, uh, you know, being a, a, a great ambassador for, for Purdue. And uh, they, they do a great job on the field. And uh, I just think their work ethic, their character, the pride they're going to take in, in representing Purdue is going to uh, really showcase itself when they get here. You know, they're both enrolling early. They want a chance to go out there and prove their worth right away, and I think they'll be uh, outstanding players. Uh, and you had uh, four other players from the state. One guy that was uh, a late, uh, not late signee, but came in late in the recruiting period in terms of coming to visit. Joseph Jefferson is a safety from Indianapolis Pike High School. I had a chance to talk to him last week, and his team did not do very well this year, but he had a great senior season. You know, Joseph was somebody who came on the radar a little bit later in the process, and uh, we got a chance to 
you know, watch him, and he uh, was really good on video. And uh, the more we got to know him and his background, his father played for the Indianapolis Colts, was a college player at Western Kentucky. Um, they live in Indianapolis now, uh, obviously, uh, but uh, really, you know, did a, an outstanding job uh, for, for his team. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, he wants to be here. He wants to, you know, play in front of his family and friends. And, uh, you know, we look forward to, uh, for a bright future with him. Another guy that was in here last week and is a, a fellow that had committed to Duke, but when they had the coaching change, he decided to switch his allegiance, and that was Max Clare, who's a tight end out of just outside of Cincinnati, the uh, Indiana side of Cincinnati. Well, we like both of our tight ends. We had Charlie Ken Kenrich uh, committed all year. Uh, his father went to Purdue, has a, a background here, tough, hard nose, uh, can do a lot of things, play H-back, tight end, linebacker, uh, just a, a physical guy that uh, really – likes to get his hands dirty and those are always valuable and you talk about max he's more of the uh, size that you're looking for as far as height he's got to grow into his body a little bit but he's athletic he can catch the ball he's a former quarterback um, you know he, he had a really good senior year and, and a good offense at, at a good school in Cincinnati St. X and uh, he's got a lot of family with Purdue ties so we were fortunate to get him and add them both to the mix and I think they'll um, you know both really really be productive players in the future. Purdue has had a great luck in the past uh, recruiting out of Fort Wayne you got another guy this year uh, Dominic Moon who's a linebacker out of Fort Wayne Snyder. Dominic was one of the first ones to get in the boat he's been um, true to us all along he had a really successful year play some other sports um, you know I just think he's got some toughness and some grit and uh, you know, will come in and, uh, you know, compete and, and represent, uh, you know, his area and, and, and this state very well, and uh, we're excited to get him. And the last in-state guy right here in town, uh, the same high school that produced George Karloftis, gives us Mo Amanade, who's a defensive tackle. Mo's a wrestler, so you know he's got good footwork, he's got good strength, and he's got a high motor. You know, most someone who has uh, exceptional strength um, at his age uh, is, is built very well, but yet very athletic with good feet and quickness. Uh, he played middle linebacker in high school quite a bit. Uh, we're going to have him on the defensive line. I just think he's going to have some quickness and some twitch to him along with strength that, uh, you know, can give us a, a little advantage in there. He is, without question, a great wrestler. Uh, so I just think he's very athletic. Uh, you know, he wants to be here. He wants to represent uh, his family in, in this area. And, uh, you know, he's going to roll early also. He's wrestling now. Won't be able to finish the season for him, but uh, we'll get him here uh, right in January. Uh, Jeff, overall, out of those 19 guys, 11 on the offensive side, 8 on defense. But a point you made earlier today, you're always going to recruit linemen on both sides. As we found out through the years, you cannot have enough depth on the offensive or defensive line. It's really hard to over-recruit at that position. Yes, uh, and that's what we're going to continue to do. you got to, you know, try to get some guys that can come in and play as early as, as possible, but yet you've got to get a few other guys that you can develop and think have the potential uh, to be productive players once they get the right strength and in their right program. And uh, I think we've got a good mix, uh, you know, and we're always will continue to search for, you know, offense and defense alignment that can help us either in the future or right away. That's always going to be an emphasis. And, uh, you know, those are guys that just put a lot of hard work in, don't get very much credit. But without them, you're not going to be very successful. Well, it was a good day for the future of Boilermaker football, but the immediate future is a bowl game coming up here in a couple of weeks. And when we come back, we're going to talk with Senior Associate Athletics Director Tom Moreland about that. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield.
Feeds the Boilermakers and Tennessee Volunteers. Music City Bowl coming up December 30th. Let's catch up quickly on Facebook. Uh, Muncie, Indiana checking in. Taylorsville, Kentucky. And by the way, our thoughts are with all of the folks down in Kentucky and all of the states that were impacted by that horrible series of tornadoes last Friday. San Diego checking in along with uh, Cicero, Indiana. And my favorite here, Boiler Up from where the bucket resides, West Lafayette. Tom Moreland, we like that. We like to have the bucket back right where it belongs. I've looked at that trophy case when I've come in the building, and I don't like it empty. Now it's filled up again. No, no, we definitely want to have the bucket in uh, West Lafayette and Kozik Football Performance Center. Uh, you know, as Jeff was talking to you, a great year by our coaching staff and our student athletes. You know, one of the things that we always want to make sure to tell people is, you know, those 12 games in the fall, it's just really a reflection of all the hard work that goes on. I remember talking to Jeff back in January and just Jeff and the staff working through every single piece of the program and that played out this fall so all the congratulations goes to them but then also our fan base for showing up. Well let's, uh, we're talking with Tom Moreland the senior associate ath uh, associate athletics director and you, you mentioned the fans uh, the football attendance this year up again 98 percent plus capacity and uh, they're a big difference when they come to ross Aid Stadium and it's been unbelievable to see the change here in the five years that Jeff's been the head coach. Yeah, the energy in ross Aid Stadium is absolutely electric. You know, one of the first things that we like to tell people is when we do have a visiting team come in, one of the things a visiting AD usually says is just how great of an environment it is, how great our fans are. But when you look at attendance, really, for Jeff's time here, so you go back to about 2016, you know, Tim, and, and you know this better than I do, not a lot of people in Ross State Stadium no, at that time. No, no. definitely probably under about 30,000, frankly. And then Jeff's time here, I think this year we finished just about 58,000. I think that point, you said what, 98%? 98 goal? plus percent, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that's something I should probably know, but I, I got that from our communications team about two weeks ago. But just the growth and energy around the program, you see that in attendance, you can see it in the environment, in ross Aid Stadium. And I think Mike Babinski started to talk about this a little bit more publicly, but we're really trying to take a look at making some additional improvements to ross Aid really over about the next two or three years. So we're really excited about the direction. And, and Tom, one of your key areas is revenue generation. There is no bigger revenue generator in an athletics program than the football team. You gotta fill your stadium. You gotta get great, great media rights. You do all those. You've got money to run your other sports. Yeah, no, we definitely do. But the success of our football program goes back to our coaches and student athletes. Having a successful football program, filling ross Aid Stadium, that does provide us the horsepower to have 18 successful sports at Purdue. But then also our donor base as well in the John Purdue Club. Tim, as you know, this last year was really challenging working through COVID back to 2020, and the More Than a Game campaign was really successful. And the reason why that was successful is because of our donor base. But yes, football is the driving force behind our revenue generation and giving us the horsepower to be successful successful in everything we do. We know back in 2018, Boilermaker fans had quite a caravan going down I-65 to Nashville. We've already seen now your ticket allotment sold out, the, the initial ticket allotment. Where are we right now with tickets for that game? Yeah, so so we're not, we're not just sold out, we're, we're more than sold out. So the bowl landscape has really changed this year. We worked with our bowl partners in the Big Ten. So we had initially 5,000 tickets allotted to us. We, we sold that out immediately and we worked with the Music City Bowl to get about another 2,000 tickets. Now, the one thing we do want Purdue fans to understand is those went to Purdue fans first. Mm -hmm. While we know the game's in Nashville, Tennessee, and just a few hours from Knoxville, and, and there'll probably be a little bit of orange in that stadium, when you look at our 7,000 tickets, those all went to John Purdue Club members and season ticket holders. So we're grateful for the partnership from the Music City Bowl, but there's definitely going to be a large contingent of Purdue fans at the Music City Bowl. All right, we're going to talk more about the bowl and other things related to the Purdue Athletic Department with Tom Moreland. When we come back, it is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield.
We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of ross State Stadium. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student-athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler-made. Let's take a look at a trio of NFL players. Juwan Bentley and the New England Patriots right now the number one seed in the AFC. Juwan's had 42 solo tackles this year, 68 total tackles. He's also had a sack and three fumbles for so he's having a heck of a season for Bill Belichick and the Patriots. Uh, Rondale Moore at Arizona has caught 51 passes for 426 yards and a touchdown. Did see today DeAndre Hopkins is probably out for the regular season with a knee sprain, so it looks like Rondale's probably going to get a few more balls thrown his way here in the next few weeks. And it was great to see Bryson Hopkins get on the field for the L.A. Rams. Did not catch a pass on Monday night, but did have a key block on a touchdown pass that helped uh, the uh, Rams knock off the Arizona Cardinals. So another good season for the Boilermakers in the professional ranks. Uh, we're going to talk oh, again, Tom, about the Music City Bowl because there are still some travel packages we understand available that have uh, events in a hotel room. It's for John Purdue Club members, and the deadline, though, is coming up this Friday at 5. Yeah, so the deadline is this Friday at 5. For people looking for information, just go to PurdueFanTravel.com, reach out to the John Purdue Club office, and they'll work you through all the different logistics. Now, now, Tim, the one thing we want to make sure people understand is it's always a good time to join the John Purdue Club. Absolutely. So if you haven't been involved or you're looking to get involved and you're thinking about getting football tickets, join the John Purdue Club, go to PurdueFanTravel.com, see what options there are to come down to the Music City Bowl. You know, we've talked all, all uh, fall long about the momentum, not just from football, but another great win women's volleyball season, men's and women's basketball off to terrific starts. Momentum builds upon itself. It really seems like the ball's rolling in the right direction right now in the Purdue Athletics Complex. Yeah, so we were in an all-staff meeting about two weeks ago, and, and Mike really walked through all that different on-field success. So a successful football season, men's basketball season is off to a great start, women's basketball gaining some momentum, some wins. Like you said, volleyball going to the Elite Eight, women's soccer program. Right. They had a terrific season yep. as well, but then also if you look at our men's golf team. They're in the top 25 this fall as well. So really just think winning's contagious. Our student athletes are really competitive and we're excited about the way things are moving forward and excited for 2022. You mentioned, Tom, there may be some changes coming up in ross Aid Stadium. I know fans are looking forward. There. Everything was kind of put on pause during COVID, during the more than a game campaign. Any previews or any hints about what we might be looking at either in the near or far future with the stadium? Yeah, so our number one priority is just improving the fan experience. So if you look at the last two or three years, we put in the ribbon boards in the north end zone, the large video board in the south end zone. We've made improvements to concessions. We've made improvements to the sound system. But as we look moving forward, Tim, what I would tell you is we're probably going to do it in phases. And I think I've heard Mike talk about that. We were looking at a larger project before. But just with the momentum around our program, our fans coming to ross Eight Stadium and filling it, we want to do things in phases. So our, our hope is to do things maybe in the next couple of years, see what phase two is and f see what phase three is. So we take that approach of continuing to improve the fan experience. I, I would tell you, Tim, there is one thing we want fans to know. It's just our football ticket renewal deadline. Yes. So, so we've moved that up to March 1st. And so the reason we've moved that up to March 1st is so many fans are calling in and wanting to maybe move seats or get better seats or maybe add to their seating block or they refer a friend or a business associate to get involved and come to ross Eight Stadium. Before, when it was April 30th, we, we didn't give our fans enough time to do those types of things. And when attendance has gone up from, call it, you know, 28,000 to 58,000, we've had to make that adjustment because that's what our fans need. And I would think as happy as uh, Jeff Brom was to hear that Aiden O'Connell is coming back for his sixth year, it's not going to hurt ticket sales to know that your second uh, second uh, All Big Ten uh, quarterback is coming back and, and going to play another season here in, in West Lafayette. I think that will help drive some fan interest in this program. I think that was probably the, uh, the number one question a lot of people are getting, especially Jeff. But, yeah, Aiden is an absolutely tremendous young man. I've got to know him a little bit, and we couldn't be more excited about him coming back. Well, Tom, it looks like it's going to be a great bowl trip. Again, uh, give us that website that fans can go to if they want more information about the Music City Bowl. PurdueFanTravel.com. And don't forget, to renew those season tickets. They're going to have a full Ross State Stadium again next year. Absolutely. Tom, congratulations on a great year so far, and let's have some fun down in Nashville. Thanks, Tim. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us when we come back. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield.
Jeff Brom Show. The final Jeff Brom Show of the season, by the way. We'll be back with you again next fall. And uh, our next Matt Painter Show coming up here on the uh, Boilermaker Sports Network will be on January 4th. So we're going to take a little time off for the holidays. So one guy that's not taking time off, though, is our head coach here because you're getting ready for a football game. Uh, talk about your schedule, when you started practice, and how you'll ramp that up until December 30th. Well, after the last regular season game, we basically gave our guys two weeks off of football and uh, wanted them to concentrate on the grades or getting their schoolwork back up to par. Um, you know, we had some nicks and bruises and injuries. I wanted to give them some time to heal and get refreshed. Really, it was two straight weeks of recruiting for our coaches. Uh, you know, so being on the road, and I was on the road the entire time going around and seeing some of our, not some, basically all of our commits and then a few others uh, along the way. Um, so that was... Uh, tiresome and then uh, we got back uh, I guess today's Wednesday uh, this past Friday was our first practice and we practiced Friday and Saturday we had uh, about eight young men on official visits that, that weekend as well uh, we gave our team off Sunday and then we went Monday Tuesday off today we're going Thursday Friday and we'll give them the weekend off uh, so we've had good practices we want to make sure we you know we get ready and prepared but we also get as many guys healthy as we can because we are going to be down some guys uh, so whoever can get there healthy uh, we're going to need them to play in the game well and one of the big advantages to bowl practices or getting into a bowl game is the practices you get 15 extra as, as many as 15 extra practices and a chance to get young guys repetitions that don't get as much playing time and you mentioned you're probably going to need some of those guys here in a couple of weeks we are so we, we we've uh, every practice has consisted of at least 30 minutes extra of uh, young guys practice at the end at the same time you are correct. Some of those are, could easily play in the game, so we've got to be cautious we don't get those guys injured uh, because we're going to need them. But you know what? At some point in time, young guys have to step up and showcase what they're all about. This game, there will be some, some new faces in there, uh, and uh, it's their time to, to you know, challenge themselves to, to play at a, a high level against a really good opponent. Well, speaking of that opponent, the Tennessee Volunteers, 7-5 and five in the regular season, but they play a style, especially offensively, that you haven't seen in the Big Ten. They probably play quicker on offense than any team in the country. Well, that is uh, their strength uh, right now on offense is playing with great tempo, uh, spreading the field, uh, getting the ball snapped, trying to get you out of position a little bit. Uh, they have good skill, uh, really good transfer quarterback. Uh, that's a fifth-year or sixth-year senior from Virginia Tech. He can run it and throw it. Uh, good running back. Uh, they've been able to score points in that manner. Their defense has, has been solid. Uh, they definitely have guys that look the part and, uh, at every position. You know, as I, as I look around the Big Ten to try to compare them to a team, you know, other than the fact that they'll spread out and go fast, I, I think their talent level is similar to Penn State. I really think they have some good talent on the team. Um, and uh, we're going to have to really be prepared. And uh, like I said, young guys are going to have to step up, and, and we're going to have to really play efficient football in order to win the game. And one thing you always assume when you play an SEC team is that they're going to have good team speed. It seems like that is a league of runners. Well, it is, and, and, and as you as you study them, you know, at every position, they're, they're going to have, <coughs> you know, guys take the field that are going to have the build you want and uh, have speed, and um, you know, they are, you know, are well coached, and uh, you know, it, this is you know, they beat Kentucky this past year and played some other teams well, and they were seven and five, and um, you know, it's it's going to be a good matchup that uh, you know we we got to hang in there and, and keep this thing close and, and not. Uh, uh, you know, let them get to a lead that's going to be hard to come back from. All right, we'll have our final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group after this from Learfield.
Final segment of the season on the Jeff Brom Show. The Rorman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brom Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. We certainly thank them and all of our sponsors this season. We want to get a final look here at uh, Facebook to make sure we don't miss anybody. Knightstown, Indiana, Kokomo, Marco Island, Florida, Littlestown, Pennsylvania, Danville, Kentucky, Orlando, Champaign, Illinois, and DeMott, Indiana. Thank you for tuning in tonight. After you play, December 30th, uh, you go into the offseason. What is the offseason schedule between now and the spring football? Well, I think that uh, it's important that after the bowl game's over, our guys take a break, uh, enjoy the rest of the holidays with their family, uh, get and see, get to see the people that uh, you know they care about and love, and and, and enjoy that. And uh, you know, we'll start school back up uh, mid mid January at the latest, and uh, we'll ease them into some workouts in the weight room and some light conditioning, and just start to amp that up a little bit as we get going. Uh, eventually, we'll get to some football meetings as well. Um, you know, once they're you know situated and set. Um, and then normally the, the last week of February around that date is when we'll start spring practice, which consists of 15 practices over five weeks, three practices a week, and we normally have a spring break in between, which is normally around the second uh, week of March. Uh, and, and uh, you know, that'll be a time for a lot of young guys and uh, a lot of new uh, faces, uh, especially mid-year enrollees, whether it's uh, in high school or, or, or transfer, can go out there and, and, and showcase, you know, their talent and what they, uh, their value to the team. And uh, I think it'll be a good spring. We, we, we definitely made strides last year in the off season. We've got to continue to have the same hunger and desire to want to be good and learn from our mistakes and get better if we want to try to improve. Uh, but I do think it's important to try to finish this season strong against a really good opponent. You know, this is a team that if we don't come ready to play, uh, you know, it could get uglier than we want. So we've got to you know, really play hard, be into the game, uh, have everyone stepping up and, and rising to the occasion because I do think it's important to end the season uh, on the right note. You mentioned this Tennessee team reminds you a little bit of Penn State in the Big Ten. Ironically, Penn State is the team that you will open the 22, uh, 2022 season against here at ross Aid Stadium. So it'll be an interesting offseason and an interesting ramp up to that first game here at, uh, at ross Aid. Well, when you open up with Penn State, it means you, you better have a good offseason and uh, you better come ready to play. Uh, I know we played Penn State a couple years ago and they must have sacked our quarterback 55 times in the first five plays. I mean, it wasn't a good day for us. So, we, you know, I think we've made strides. And uh, when you get your teeth knocked in a little bit, uh, hopefully you realize that uh, it's going to take a great effort and great preparation uh, to get it done. And, and having an opponent of that caliber game one normally motivates your guys to have a good offseason. You knew that your defense was going to be improved in 2021. I think that uh, maybe it, it may have surprised some people on the outside. But when you look back at this 2021 season, which we know the final chapter hasn't been written. What's your story? What what do you will you remember from this football team in this year? Well, I'm very proud of our football team and, 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 and also of the staff that we've assembled over this past year. I think we've got a good collection of coaches and players that uh, are good people that want to do things the right way, that want to work in a collaborative approach to figure out ways to win, that are competitive, that understand that uh, you know, it takes everybody to do their job in order to get it done. And I think you just have to have that mentality. Uh, you have to have the hunger and the desire to, to want to do something special in order to get it done. It just doesn't happen. And uh, no matter what happens every week, you have to have the toughness uh, and the tough skin to be able to withstand uh, the scrutiny or even the pats on the back and come back the next week to get it done. I just think, you know, winning against two top five opponents this year has proven what you can be capable of if you set your mind to it and you're willing to, to lay it on the line. And that's what makes the season special when you can, you can you know, get big wins and, and do things that others don't think can happen. Well, Jeff, we know the future of Purdue football is exciting. You look at that class that you signed today and the difference makers in that class, you add that to the talent you got coming back. And I think this is a train that certainly can keep on rolling through 2022 and beyond. Congratulations on a great season and good luck in the bowl game. Okay, thank you. All right, the Boilermakers taking on the Tennessee Volunteers in the Music City Bowl. That will be December 30th at uh, Nissan Stadium. We'll have our broadcast starting at 2 o'clock. We want to thank our engineer, Wes Scott, and our producer, Ray Klapmeyer, for their work all season long. We also want to thank all the fans who come out here every week to Wolfie's. We appreciate you being in the audience with us. And also, we appreciate all of our watchers on Facebook Live. We do uh, thank you for checking in and hope that you've enjoyed the show this season. Again, this is the final Coach Brom show of the season. And we do have the Matt Painter Show starting back up. That will be on Tuesday, January 4th 
as the Boilermakers uh, get ready for uh, what we hope is another run at a Big Ten championship. For the head coach and for Tom Moreland, this is Tim Newton from Wolfies in West Lafayette. We'll see you down in Nashville for the bowl game. Until then, this is Boilermaker football from Learfield.